Hello and welcome to Mr Barton's autograph video number 39. Now this week we're going to continue our journey through the wonderful world of autograph extras and we're going to take a look at the fantastic trigonometry extra. So first thing let's find it so I'm just cracked open autograph I'm in advanced mode but standard mode's fine for this as well. Hover up here to file new extras page and there we go trigonometry. Now let's take a look at this. Now this is a brilliant little um, extra to use with other GCSE students um, to explain to them where the trigon trigonometric functions come from, sorry for that, um, or for A-level students when they're looking at solving equations. So let's have a little mess around with it and see how it works. So here we've got um, an angle defined there and if I increase the size of that angle then these lovely graphs start to appear and it's beautifully colour coordinated here because you'll see that the height of that uh, line on this unit circle is going to be sine and the base um, along there is going to start forming your cos graph and this bit here is going to be the tangent so as I increase it you'll see how these graphs form and it's really nice this unit circle introduction for showing where, why sine's positive where it is and negative where it is and likewise for cos and tan. So that's all well and good. Oh, I'll show you what I like as well. Once you get to 360 degrees as it's popping along, keep your eye on the axes of the graph. They move along nicely just to show you that it repeats. And if you can't be bothered clicking, if you just hit this button here, then it'll take you on a journey for you. So that's very nice for showing where the three functions come from. Uh, but of course, being autographed, we can do much more than that. So if I just hit stop and reset, and um, of course I can switch to radians as well and the axes change very, very nicely there. But I'm just gonna stick in degrees for now. So what I can do is I can start changing some of these constants. Now this is where um, it's good for GCSE and for A-level because if I increase the value of A to 2, oh sorry, 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 <laughs> I hit the wrong side. If I increase the value of A to 2, let's have a look what that does to the graph. So if I start playing here, now the value, the sine graph seems to be coming through 90 there whereas previously if I put that back to 1 it was peaking at 90 there at 1 so we can get the students to say what the difference is here and why they think those differences are true and it's dead good because I can just flick through it and change the value of that constant and observe the effect on the graph which is really nice and as I accidentally demonstrated before I don't have to stop at integers I can go backwards here and I can see what happens when I change the values into fractions which is really really nice as well and um, but of course there's more to do than that. If I just pop that value, if I hit reset and pop that value back at 1, I can also change this value, this B value. And if I change that to say 45, that's quite a nice one, and I play, I can again challenge the students to say how does this blue sign graph, how does that differ to what it was before? And again, that's where we get the whole idea of shift in parallel to the x-axis and stretch factors and all that kind of stuff. So a really, really nice uh, extra this and there's one other thing that we can do if I just reset everything and I'll just play it for a little bit and um, we've got these functions down here which of course are your inverse functions and if I just stop it there again of course with autograph we always get the students to predict what's going to happen first and get the discussions going but whenever I'm ready to see the inverse functions I can just have them plotted there on the same graph which is really nice so when sine has a value of 1 the obviously the inverse 1 over 1 sorry I'm saying um, the the reciprocal 1 over 1 is also got a value of 1 and then when sine is at 0 it becomes undefined and we can just take the students through that watching how each of those graphs are formed which is really really nice so a nice little um, extra page for you to have a play around with there so I hope that was useful and I will be back with another video next week bye for now